I've been bodybuilding for over 20 years, and during that time, I've always taken a very old school approach. I've tracked my weight on the scale, I take measurements, I track my logbook, I focus on what I see in the mirror. Now, during that time, these simple methods have served me very well. And to be honest, I've only measured my body fat percentage maybe a handful of times randomly throughout these years. Generally, what I see is my body fat percentage at the very highest is around 12 to 14%, especially deep in the off season, and around 6% pre-contest. But this year, I've decided to track all my body metrics much more closely. Hume Health was nice enough to send me their body pod. And to be honest, the data that I'm seeing is just so cool that I wanted to share it with you guys as well. The body pod is a small, portable device that reads my weight, my body composition, and even my heart metrics. It uses eight frequency sensors in the handle so I can scan my torso, my arms, my legs, and my heart. And the readings are actually about as accurate as medical grade tests. This is huge for me right now because I can actually track what's going on in my body, not just what I see in the mirror or on the scale. So let's jump into the app and you can see exactly what things are looking like for me right now, deep in my off season. So I've been using the body pod for a week so far and I have a good baseline data to work off of. My body weight is 210.8 pounds, but it's gotten as high as about 214 pounds about a month ago. Since then, I've dropped some food, I've done a mini cut to reset, and I've gotten right back to gaining. So this is where we are currently. My goal weight plugged in here is at 200 pounds, which is actually where I want to be next year. The weight cap for Classic Physique at my height is 202 pounds. So what we're really looking to do is first get up to about 220 to 225 pounds before that prep begins. So right now I still have about another 10 or 15 pounds of gaining before this offseason is over and prep starts. But let's move on to some metrics here. First is my metabolic age, 27 years old, which I'm really happy about considering I've never done any testing like this before. For the record, I'm 36 years old, so my metabolic age is about 9 years younger. And for reference, I do zero cardio, other than focusing on hitting 10,000 steps daily and very intense weight training 5 days per week. So this just goes to show you how effective maintaining a relatively lean body composition, eating adequate protein and calories, and intense weight training can be on your overall health. Moving on to skeletal muscle mass, 132 pounds. And that actually puts me right around the normal range. And I know most of you watching this, you're expecting to see that number come back very high just because of my physique and my overall muscular appearance. But there's actually some really cool insight to why that is. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. But this just reinforces one thing that I've been saying for years. So many times people see my videos, pictures of me, or if they even see me in person, they just assume that I'm 230 to 240 pounds even. Now, obviously, I do have a muscular physique, but my total body weight, even more specifically, my total muscle mass, is actually a bit more modest than many people might assume. And I'll show you the reason for that in just a second. But first, my body fat percentage is coming in at 11.6%, and I'm really happy with that, especially for the amount of food that I've been pushing. I've been consuming around 4,000 calories daily. Staying under 12% body fat is really where I want to sit in the off season. Once the body fat creeps up too much, that's when your body starts to become less insulin sensitive, and you just don't handle carbohydrates very well. This makes gaining muscle mass much more difficult, and the likelihood of you gaining muscle mass in a surplus actually starts shifting more to likely storing body fat. The exact body fat percentage where this happens is different for most guys, but a general rule of thumb is there's really zero reason to go above 20% body fat at any phase in a gaining phase for anyone. Now, for guys that have more muscle mass and are more advanced like myself, that number can actually be much lower. For me, my cutoff point is really 14% body fat at the absolute max. Anytime I reach that point, I really like to pull back, sit around 12%, and ride that out for the remaining phase. But let's look at some more, even more specific details. We have muscle mass in the arms, legs, and trunk. Now, according to this data, my arms and legs actually carry more muscle mass relative to my trunk. We all know I'm a very arm-dominant bodybuilder, so this makes sense. My torso at the moment is actually my focus this offseason. I'm really looking to bring up the chest, the shoulders, and the back more. So this data does reinforce the decision I made to switch to a torso and limb split, where I train the chest, back, and delts in one day, and then I hit the arms and legs in the next session, rest and repeat. But moving on, the body fat shows that I actually store more fat in my arms as well than anywhere else. This tends to work in my favor in the off-season especially. It just makes me look more muscular in t-shirts. My abs and legs, they always tend to stay on the leaner side, which is nice too. Trunk at 6% body fat and legs around 4%. It's pretty crazy lean at this point. Now, total body fat percentage at 11.6, that puts my lean mass at 177.3 pounds. My sub-Q fat mass at 21.4 pounds. Now, sub-Q fat mass is the body fat that you see under the skin. And this makes up 10% of my fat mass. 
pretty much exactly where we want to be in the offseason. Now, visceral fat, that's the fat around your organs. And this is really the fat that you don't want to see raise. And it's really the last bit of fat that even the leanest of guys never lose. It's the reason that most shredded guys or guys that are on stage are still 5 to 6% body fat and not zero. Because there's still fat around the organs despite even getting your skin paper thin. Okay, now skeletal muscle mass at 137.2 pounds and skeletal mass at 25.1 pounds. This is where it starts to get interesting and it's why most people think I'm much bigger than I really am. Especially in proportion to my 210 pound physique, 25 pound skeletal mass is really pretty low. I basically have very thin joints and not much density to my actual bones, or at least nothing to write home about. So someone who's also carrying the same amount of muscle mass as me and is my exact height, they could be potentially walking around with double that number. They might be looking exactly the same, but they could be weighing 235 pounds and you wouldn't even notice the difference. This is also the reason some bodybuilders just simply look massive at a light body weight or vice versa. Now, body water at 69.6% is high. This also plays into that look to a lesser extent. Muscle is obviously primarily water, so this is obviously going to be a bit higher. But more hydration, more fullness to the muscles, the more glycogen gets stored properly. And even if your muscle mass doesn't increase, but your hydration and your glycogen storage are maxed out, that's going to give you a significantly fuller appearance to your physique. Now, I tend to be someone who has big swings in water. When I diet, I do lose a ton of water weight very quickly. And when I add food back in, I tend to bloat a bit more easily. So considering how high my food intake is at the moment, this is pretty normal for me. Now, overall, this is really cool metrics to see. and something that I'm definitely going to continue to track the rest of this offseason to help keep me accountable and to ensure that the weight I'm gaining is as lean as possible. Now, when it comes time to diet, it will also ensure me that the weight that I am losing on the scale is fat and water weight. And if my diet or training are on point as they should be, it'll reflect the muscle mass retention. And I'll keep you guys posted on this and possibly do another video in a few weeks with an update. Also, I know Hume is running a Black Friday sale currently. And my stackable code gets you the biggest savings right now at up to 50% off total. So if you're interested in picking one of these up, don't miss it. I'll leave the link down below for you guys. You can check that out. And if you want additional savings, make sure to use my code PeterK at checkout.